This is an All Sports Station production. Today, from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, this is the National Football League. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Here's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Kansas City Chiefs. Harrison Butker set to get us started. It's two AFC powerhouses, the Chiefs and Ravens, underway in Baltimore. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Now we get our first peek at the Ravens' offense, and at the helm, of course, the most valuable player of the NFL in 2019, Lamar Jackson. And to me, he's one of the two most difficult guys in the league to game plan for in the NFL, and I add Patrick Mahomes in that category. But just about every team we talk to getting ready for Lamar Jackson says the exact same thing. We've got to slow him down running the football, yet no one's been able to really do it consistently. Now, the most impressive thing about his game to me, how he's developed as both a passer and a leader. His team believes in him. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the game's opening play and a quick first down. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. From the gun, Jackson he has got his man. It's Andrews. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. A gain of four, not enough. And it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. 
If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Nicole Hardman, pro bowler last year as a rookie, is deep for KC. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. The KC offense set to go, led as always by the gunslinger, a former MVP in this league, it's Patrick Mahomes. Well, partner, normally if a guy's touchdown passes fall in half, the first thing you'd say is, he really didn't have a very good season, did he? Well, it's true, Mahomes dropped from 50 touchdown passes the year before to just 26 last year. But remember, he had a knee injury and missed a few ball games, and he still remained in the conversation as the best quarterback in the NFL. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Working from the gun, Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. I know it's a little bit of a cliche to talk about all the tight ends who are really wide receivers in the NFL, but Travis Kelsey fits that perfectly. He led all tight ends last season with over 1,200 yards receiving, fourth in the NFL. I think he's one of the gold standards in the league for the tight end position, and I don't know if anyone has any more fun playing the game than Travis Kelsey. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. I don't think there's any doubt that we'll see a little bit more of McCall Hardman as a receiver in year two. First year, used him a little bit as a gimmick. Throw it to him occasionally, some jet sweeps, maybe some return game. But he really came on late in the season. 538 yards, six touchdowns. A pretty darn good year for a rookie receiver and really made his huge impact as a return guy. Earned a Pro Bowl nomination in his first season. He was trying to get that to Edwards and Lair out of the backfield. That'll bring up second down. Mahomes to throw once more. Got a man open, it's Ricky Seals-Jones. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 16 yards, a first down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. They'll run for the first time with Clyde Edwards Alaire. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, Maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. The tight end, Kelsey. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Edwards Alaire, they'll try to run for it. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. And that's why you spend a first round draft pick on a running back. Not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third and ones, third and twos. That's why you draft him.
On first down, Mahomes. That's who is running back, Edwards Alaire. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The end result, 21 yards. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. They'll run. It's Edwards Alaire. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. From the 17, Mahomes. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now Mahomes on the bootleg. That's complete to his tight end, Seals Jones. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. That good for six as they keep this drive right on rolling. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talk to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They'll run here with Edwards Hilaire. And he's going to take it into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Harrison Butker is on for the extra point. And his kick is good to make it 7-0 KC. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it's capped off by a touchdown run from Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The offense working its way back out here for the 2-0 Baltimore Ravens who are coming off their 14th straight regular season victory. You remember that they had the 38-6 dismantling of the Browns in the open. Week 2 looked just as strong. 33-16 they win at Houston. And Lamar Jackson, the AFC Offensive Player of the Week for Week 1, 
Well, he wasn't spectacular versus Houston, 18-24, 204 yards and a touchdown, added 54 on the ground. But even when he's not at his dazzling best, his team can still win by three scores on the road. And just you putting those numbers out there and knowing that it's Lamar Jackson, we all go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I had an okay day. If someone else's name is on that on those numbers, we're saying, boy, what a big day he had. That's, that's the standard that Lamar Jackson has set for himself and for the league. This is a really good football team. And how about Mark Ingram with the clinching touchdown partner? Did you see that on a fourth and short? He goes into Wildcat, takes a snap, bursts through the middle, goes all the way in for a touchdown, puts a big martial arts move on the wall and behind the end zone. The only thing he didn't do? He didn't sweep the leg. Other than that, perfect. Big test in week three now for Baltimore because Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City are coming to town. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13, it's a first down. That is definitely what we call on defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's gonna try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The last run got six, now second and four. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. And they'll down as he's inside the 40. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory at the 39-yard line. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. False start, backs him up five, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Ingram. Give him a couple on the run there. It'll be second and 13. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson rolling to his right. Now he'll let it go deep right. This is caught inside the 15. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. That one covers 29 yards. First down. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. The head coach relied on his eagle eye in the sky to make the right call and was told to challenge it, and it looks like it's paid off. And from a coach's standpoint, when you throw that flag, it's probably a pretty tense moment here it pays off. Yeah, you have that little bit of indecision. You throw it where you feel like you're right, and then you think, uh-oh, did I get it right? In this case, they can celebrate. He can run for it, and he will. 
Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. Here's Snead as they run the jet sweep. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense, diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. On the draw, this is Ingram. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. He made Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. So they decide not to back him up. They want the down. An interesting call there, as it'll lead to fourth down. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. Tucker's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And bring this out to the 25. No return there for Hardman. Well, for the Kansas City Chiefs, 2-0 so far this season as they begin their Super Bowl defense. And the win in Week 2, that was a fun one. 23-20 over the Chargers in OT. Their 11th straight victory if you count the postseason. And how about Harrison Butker? Maybe looking to supplant Justin Tucker as the league's all-pro kicker. He hit the 53-yarder to win it, but that was notified by a penalty. Hit a 58-yarder, but the Chargers had taken a timeout, so he had to hit another 58-yarder, the official game winner. He got it done, CD. That was a heck of a sequence, Brandon, and we found out a few things about Harrison Butker right there. He handles pressure very, very well. Obviously in shape, having to make those long kicks right in a row. This kid is something special. He and Justin Tucker, that's something to talk about because they will play this week against each other. But how about Patrick Mahomes? We always have to talk about him, don't we? He's good every month, but how about in September? 9-0 as a starter in his career. And how about the game coming up on Monday night? We all can't wait for it. Week three matchup, undefeated teams, a battle of the last two league MVPs and Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson of Baltimore, who are also the last two Madden cover athletes. And Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson will take on each other in Baltimore Monday night. Let's do this. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. First and 10, here's Mahomes. And he's got his receiver. That's Sammy Watkins. 
This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Sammy Watkins is a former first-round pick in the NFL, and he sure reminded us during Kansas City's run to the playoffs last season. Ten catches in the AFC Championship game and a 98-yard receiving game in Super Bowl 54. He did talk about possibly stepping away and getting some time in the offseason, but Kansas City very happy to have him back in their lineup and in their fold. They'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. This defense is really flowing around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. looks to throw on third down. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. This is caught by Hill for a Chiefs touchdown. Tyreek Hill, 51 yards. And the Chiefs add on to their lead. And Charles, the defender, was there. He just didn't get it. Sometimes these plays turn into basketball, in a sense, with two guys going up for the football. Which guy's going to box the other away from it and grab it? Yeah, I know you hear it a lot, but it's just the will to get it, right? Oh, without a doubt, the will as well as some really nice touch on the ball that was thrown. And some talent, too. Butker now to add the extra point. This one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A drive there of just four plays. And it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Their deficit is 11, 14 to three, and needing to get something going here as they come up on first and 10. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. 36 yards on the play. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. From the gun, it's Jackson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Andrews. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Good catch there by Mark Andrews, who was Lamar Jackson's favorite target last year. They came in in the same draft class, 
and quickly got in sync with each other. Andrews led the team in receptions with 64 last year for 852 yards en route to his first Pro Bowl. On second down, Ingram. And he'll take this close to a first down at the Chiefs' 23. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing is Jackson. And looking for Andrews, but this is intercepted. Picked off here by Anthony Hitchens. He's at the 40. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. I tell you what, credit is due there on them preventing the touchdown after that interception. How about him chasing him down and not giving up the pick six? Because what happens a lot of the time is when you see the interception, you just kind of hang your head a little bit and you momentarily pause because you're frustrated. He shook that off and gave great chase and got it done. Still a great return and very good field position. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now a carry for Edwards Alaire. And he will take it on in for a Chiefs touchdown. Clyde Edwards Alaire with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Chiefs are able to extend their lead. So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. And 21 to 3. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble of bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. It's worth noting when you talk about Jackson's running ability, the Baltimore wide receivers had just over 1,400 receiving yards combined last year. And Charles, that was the fewest yards by a wide receiver group in the NFL since 2011. And partner, I expect that number to go up this year. Last season, Lamar Jackson got very comfortable with his tight end group. In fact, he had one tight end and went to the Pro Bowl. But I think now, because of his ability to run the ball, it'll bring defenders closer to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see more big plays from the wide receivers downfield. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And Marquise Brown coming off of a solid rookie season, 46 catches, 584 yards, but he was never 100% in his rookie year. As head coach John Harbaugh talked about the foot injury that he played with throughout the season, now they expect him to be 100% healthy. And when so, they'll see more of those plays that had everyone calling him Hollywood in college. 
And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. So that was all you're looking for on a play like that. Get the first down and keep the drive moving. Yeah, it just looked to me like he just said to himself, I've got this. I'll take it. I'll pick it up and let's keep moving. Get the first down, get a new set, and let's start over. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss? Tenth carry here for Mark Ingram. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Easy work. It's easy work. It's coming again. The Ravens on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Jackson from the shotgun. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny when we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Flag down. This could set him back. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. But that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. So the hold on special teams backs him up all the way inside the 15 to start. Mahomes now on first down. And incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Mahomes to throw. He'll find Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And he'll be taken down, losing yardage back at the nine-yard line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Taking a deep shot here for Hardman. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. 
this might be their opportunity to get off the field. Here's the Chiefs punter now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Unable to corral him, he fights through. That hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. So a big break. The roughing the kicker called on fourth down leads to first and ten. Here's Edwards Alaire. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Right back to Edwards Alaire on first down. And he'll get this up to about the 40. It's a six yard gain on the ground and that'll make it second and four. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. From the gun, it's Mahomes. A quick slant to Hill. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 44-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. Tyreek Hill certainly makes the front office look good when they spend a fifth-round pick on a guy. Then in his first four seasons, four Pro Bowl nominations. Anytime he touches the football, he's a threat to take it the distance. Hard to get on the ground one-on-one -on -one in the open field. If you miss, in the blink of an eye, he's putting six on the board. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Ten more there and another first down. Well, I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. Mahomes now on first down. This pass going to be caught by Hardman. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. Now Edwards Alaire, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Chiefs on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This will be third and five. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Right, right. Uh -huh. 
We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. Uh, who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Uh, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. Taken about seven yards deep, and Hill will opt for the touchback. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. Quick slant to Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. Not much there, only a yard. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, quick hitter here, it's complete. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. To throw again is Jackson. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, and certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one sails out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The KC offense and Clyde Edwards-Alaire getting the ball back here. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive no, no. mates, they are really in sync right now. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. Completes it to Hardman. The Chiefs now get the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Ready. 
Working from the gun, Mahomes. That one complete to Hill. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. underneath to his running back complete and he'll be taken down but not before he works it past the 50 that goes for a Chiefs first down 14 yards and with that completion he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half boy a tough start for the secondary defensively it is and it's got to put a dent in their confidence and you know you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays but with the kind of numbers he's putting up here it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Again, they'll throw with Mahomes. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We were treated to an excellent first half from the gunslinger, Patrick Mahomes. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Ready for the start of the third quarter. The Chiefs have the lead and set to receive the football. This taken in about four yards deep. And Hardman going to go ahead and sit on this one as it'll come out to the 25. Here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. Complete the tight end, Kelsey. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. They go play fake. Mahomes. There goes a deep ball. End zone. And he's got Hardman in the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas City. Nicole Hardman, 65 yards. And the Chiefs are able to grow their lead. Charles, there aren't really any slow receivers, but there's fast and then really fast. He's really fast, and he showed off the afterburners there. And that he is because when he took off, 
I was thinking there's no chance that he can actually reach him with that pass. Yet he did, and he's still sprinting. And just think about what that does for everyone else on his team because his ability to stretch a field opens things up for the rest of the receivers on the team. Butker on for the PAT. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone, and Hill will opt for the touchback. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half, other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards picking up the first. The running game fully in sync, 1-11 to 11 on that play. And sometimes it comes from the offensive coordinator understanding what he thinks the defense is going to do and dialing up the perfect play. Sometimes the quarterback, though, can look at the defense, realize he needs to change it to a run, and that gets it done in a big way as well. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They go play action with Jackson. Sliding out of the pocket. Now he'll pull it down. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Second down at four. Check, check. Watch 54. Watch 54. Come on. From the gun, Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Jackson on first down. Looking left side, Andrews with it complete. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we've seen both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze the throwing the way we should have. And I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. Stepping up, he'll try and run. The 20, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 47 yards, and the Ravens get a bit closer. Well, Lamar Jackson remembers seven rushing touchdowns in his MVP season of 2019, and he's into the end zone here as well. And when you hear that seven rushing touchdowns in 2019, doesn't it surprise you a little bit? Yeah, you almost expect more, right? Yeah, in your mind, you think Lamar Jackson got in the end zone a bunch more. 
That might be what he does in 2020. Justin Tucker for the extra point. He's got it, and that'll make the score 31 to 13. So that drive spanned five plays, and it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. And now here comes Kansas City. Still operating with a comfortable lead despite the score a moment ago as they begin first and 10. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Eight yards to go on second down. Here's a handoff out of the gun. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Not the kind of game that will go absolutely crazy for, but it's the kind of game that you need to have when you're running back in the NFL and Clyde Edwards-Alaire with that low center of gravity and strength. He's going to get those tough, gritty yards for you when necessary. Throwing his Mahomes on third. He is going to find Hill here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position could get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. And going deep for Hill. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. After what they faced during this game where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, there has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted spotted at the 14-yard line. 
Baltimore about ready to go on offense. They come in off a touchdown drive the last time they had the ball that cut down that lead. Now the defense has done their part, got them the football back. Momentum started to shift a little bit when they scored the touchdown. It increased when the defense got them the ball back. Momentum definitely in their favor. Now they got to keep things cranking, keep it on high so they can keep cutting into that lead. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Single, single, slot, slot. Jackson from the shotgun. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. A handoff. It's Mark Ingram. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Ingram again, a first down carry. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. On second down and four, Jackson. He was looking for Mark Ingram there, and it's third and four. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Jackson to Boykin, first down, Baltimore. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Back to the running game. It's Ingram. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Now a handoff to Ingram. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. On second and nine, Jackson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Tano Passigno. Able to get him for a loss of about three. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Operating from the gun, Jackson. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Miles Boykin 
55 yards. And the Ravens cut into that lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Tucker now for the extra point. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Takes this about five yards deep. And bring this out to the 25. No return there for Hardman. The Chiefs offense and Tyreek Hill heading back out onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. Here's Edwards Alaire as they will start on the ground. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now a pass that's taken in by Hill, and they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. Well, we're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and 10. Throwing now is Mahomes. That's caught left side by Hardman. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one a gain of 20 and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. And again, it's Mahomes. That's complete to his tight end, Seals Jones. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. 
from the 37. They work on second and six. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do, and right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. From the gun on third down, Mahomes. And it's complete to Kelsey. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 18. Nice play for Kansas City, picking up the first 18 yards that time. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the gun, it's Mahomes. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Second and two, first down marker at the eight. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped to the backfield. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. The Chiefs on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This time they face a third and two. Mahomes going to throw. That's complete right around the eight. And he will take it on in for a Chiefs touchdown. Mahomes hitting his favorite target, Travis Kelsey, on the touchdown pass. And the Chiefs add on to their lead. All-pro tight end Travis Kelsey had 97 catches last year in the regular season on his way to a Super Bowl title with Kansas City. And while he's a weapon anywhere on the field, as you get closer to the end zone, you really have to look out. Witness what he did in the playoffs. Three touchdown catches against Houston in the divisional round and a big one in the Super Bowl against San Francisco, which keyed Kansas City's comeback. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A 10-play drive that time, and it winds up with the Chiefs hitting pay dirt. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And this will make it into the end zone. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. They had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out 
just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Got a man, it's Brown. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. From the gun, Jackson. And he's taken down, a chief sack. Frank Clark credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Draw play, Ingram now. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's gonna break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Going for Boykin, but it is intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Both defenses have had their struggles, but they've been good enough to get them this lead and another nice play there to help preserve the lead. It's been a game of punch-counterpunch, hasn't it? All throughout. But this time, the big swing was taken, and it didn't land. Nice play by them on defense. The KC offense and Clyde Edwards-Alaire getting the ball back here. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line? Line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotional. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Patrick Mahomes with a touchdown pass to Sammy Watkins. And the Chiefs use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Butker now to add the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. They had the short field and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone.
Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. They'll roll him out right. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. And now he'll tuck it and run. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Well, another fine run right there for Lamar Jackson and CD. That one puts him over 100 yards now for the ball game. And remember when all we talked about were 100-yard games from running backs? Mm -hmm. That when a quarterback did it was a surprise? Well, Lamar Jackson, that's part of the package as well. He'll have as many 100-yard games in the season as the top running backs in the league. On first and 10, it's Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Operating from the gun. Jackson firing quickly here, and that's complete. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. Here it's third and three. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 40. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. So now first and 10 in Chiefs territory, right at the 40. To throw again is Jackson. It's complete to Snead. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And Jackson throwing once more. This will be caught by Brown. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Jackson on first down. He's got it to Ingram, complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him nine on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. 
it's funny throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups don't they yeah they do and that's the reason why what we just saw shedding those tackles and that's what they're used to doing it is and it starts at the beginning of the play one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball they think they're going to win those too From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They're looking at a second and eight now from the 10. Ingram again. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. Nine yards on the play there and it'll set him up first and goal. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. They'll look to run with Ingram. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Ravens get a bit closer. We got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Tucker now to add the point after. And that'll cut the lead down now to 18. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's Mark Ingram who caps it off with a touchdown run. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And the Chiefs are going to make the recovery. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. All right, so let's look at these numbers. I don't want to read the tea leaves here too much, but maybe he's in his own head a little bit after that hot start and the cool off. Sometimes that happens, and this is where you get tested as a player in this league if you truly want to be an impact player or a star because that's what they're going to face each and every game. Extra coverage, extra people. <laughs> so now, do you fight through it? Do you find other ways? Or do you allow it to affect you to the point where you're no longer an impact on the game? They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second down, a run with Edwards Alaire. And he gets it down to the 32. Two yards, good enough for a first. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and handle it a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. 
Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 12 yards there on a first down. This defense, Charles, they have unraveled here in the fourth. In a sense, it's like they're being pressed, like in a basketball game, and they just can't get the ball over half court. I mean, no matter what they do, they can't get off the field. They can't slow them down. They're just going up and down the field against them. Yeah, unraveling would be a perfect word for them. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They'll run. It's Edwards Alaire. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.